Welcome to this week's edition of On the Couch series brought to you by Indigo Living. Each week, I have the privilege to interview women across the region, small businesses, big businesses, philanthropists, women that are making an impact here and globally. Now, today is a special day because I have, well, the face of Al Arabiya from NBC. Fatima is a dear friend, but you get to see her on the news channel. She's bringing, well, the breaking news from across the globe, as well as the financial world as well. But this time she's on the couch. She's behind the scenes and she's talking about her latest book, Don't Look Down talking about her incredible career in the world of journalism over 15 years of breaking news across the globe. Please welcome Fatma Dawi. Thank you. Rosemane, thank you for having me. Uh, such a beautiful introduction. Thank you for having me also in Indigo Living. I'm happy to, he to be here and have a great discussion. What does it feel like uh, being interviewed? Because I know you are, always, we're, usually we switch seats, right? You know what? I always <laughs> tell my colleagues, I said, I feel sorry for guests because they're in the hot seats and you, uh, my job is just to fire the, the hot questions. Yeah, yeah. And just, watch the face and watch the energy and watch the temperature go up so i'm on that seat today yes i hope it's not hot questions because what i want to share with viewers is your incredible journey you have reached an incredible milestone Thank in you. your career and you get to share it in your book which it talks about your career journey and of course all these taboo subjects about being a woman in the middle east yeah. Let's start with where you started. So you were born, I'm gonna throw it to you. I was born in Casablanca and then I studied there. I had a, a normal, beautiful childhood. I'm the eldest of my siblings. So I had a very, very special relationship with my father and he was my inspiration. He was a man that empowered women all through his, when he's at work, he's a banker. And he gave us probably uh, the whole freedom to 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 prosper and have a career and push push us to 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 become who we want to be so he sent me to the uk when i was 16 uh, to live my with my aunt and continue my higher education in, in london and back then i wasn't very happy with this decision because i'm a family person i love my mother love my brothers and sisters but looking at it now, I think he made the best, best. decision for me yeah. uh, because I grew up to be, you know, the, I think the best version of what I could have if I stayed in Morocco. Morocco is a beautiful place. We're used to have, uh, we're uh, geographically placed in a place where we're, we're used to having all these different nationalities, being colonized by the French and the Spanish. But that trip to the UK definitely um, leveled up what I could be doing. And so now you're in this cosmopolitan city with so many different nationalities. Where did journalism come into play? In a complete coincidence, I think it was a destiny call. Um, people who know me uh, know that I'm someone who's shy, very reserved, and my friends do not change throughout time. I think I have the same friends since at least the past 20 years. So um, I finished my education at university. I did business management, I did finance. I worked in the finance industry and it was through a very simple uh, lunch uh, with friends discussing certain options because a lot of people at that time, back in 2006, 2007, were moving to the, to the region, be it in the UAE or Qatar or things. Things were starting to build up. Uh, Dubai was, uh, was building something different. And I saw lots of my friends going. I didn't ask that, I didn't question that, but something came along my way where I went to this, it was supposed to be a normal lunch, and I met this lady who at that time uh, was moving to uh, business news. And it was a very, very new thing to a uh, news media in, mm -hmm. in the Middle East. And she was hired for that purpose. And she was a private banker in the UK. So we exchanged details. Uh, we kept in touch. And then one day on a Christmas Eve, she calls me and she says, um, how about you come to Dubai? 
And I was like, I've never been to Dubai. Um, again, coming from a Middle Eastern family, traveling to the to, to Middle East is something probably for Moroccans not not the usual. We would go to France, we'd go to Europe yeah. because it's closer. And she said, listen, we started this team in Al Arabiya and we are recruiting the best of the best with the financial background to fill in a gap uh, of business news reporting. We have the biggest markets, things are going uh, big and growing and developing and we need to grasp this opportunity and I was like me TV journalism no for sure not and she's like listen just take a ticket come to Dubai January is a beautiful month here the weather is great and you will love it just come as and I this is what pushed me so um, I I did book a ticket and I came here and I booked myself a hotel near uh, Media City because there was a beach there next to JBR. JBR yeah. was like in the middle of building. Everything was like... A, uh, it's funny because I moved the same time. It, I moved in this bracket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which and is it really was exciting. like Dubai was, it was like this big a place where everything was getting built Bigger, and yeah. builders everywhere and stuff. So I said, okay, let me find something by the beach and then yeah and then she comes she suddenly comes and visits us in al arabia i went i saw the team it was right at the very beginning and the financial market especially saudi markets was doing very 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 well everyone wanted to know what's going on it, like it's it lived the most historical boom in the history of saudi market and saudi market is at the value of above two trillion saudi yeah. Riyadh, so it's huge and I did TV tests and stuff like that. Um, I did the interviews and it was very much casual. Nothing beyond that. I was just having fun, exploring this very, um, for me, it was uh, magnificent because I've never seen what's behind the, the scenes in TV. And that's it. I went back to London and uh, a few months later, um, uh, it was an offer and i was a bit hesitant at the beginning moving cities moving countries uh, but something inside me was ready for a change i love that and then you took the leap i just said you know yes. what i'm gonna risk it i'm young what's gonna happen what's yeah. the worst gonna happen i did ask myself this question i said if i don't like it six months i have a return ticket i'll get myself a ticket go back to you to london where i call home really yeah and I, I really took it from that perspective, risk. And I came and never came back. <laughs> and so you've been with NBC for 15 years. Yes. Yeah. Which is, I, I just think it's funny because there's that the same period I came to Dubai as well. And it was so exciting. There was such an incredible energy in the air. And yes. it was the same thing. And for me, it was just an accidental trip that was supposed to be three weeks and has now lasted 15 years. <laughs> um, no, the city is incredible. And it, is. And it has grown to become Home. the city yeah i mean everyone know knows dubai and they would put it in their holiday plan of they course. would put it in their business trip agenda for the year they would put it even to buy a second home um it's it, it, it became like a melting pot of every single nationality a little bit like what i lived and grew up in london so i didn't feel the difference really and it's just uh, amazing how i see the city uh, growing and growing to become a more beautiful place to be. No, I, I feel very lucky to be here as well. So now you're at NBC. You are now the face of news. I've watched you at Davos. <laughs> I've watched you in New York. You travel the globe. You are the voice of breaking news. How does it feel to have that responsibility? Very big. I think being a journalist is one of the most exciting careers anyone can have a woman or a man because your adrenaline is running high daily there's not one single dull day in journalism because when you wake up you are either going to read the news and ask the tough questions and try to get or to squeeze your guest to the maximum so he can tell you what you want to hear and what the view <coughs> wants to hear or you are on the way to the airport to cover a conference and the first thing is in your mind and the last thing is in your mind is to break scoops and break uh, news for your channel. So it is the most demanding, the most exciting. Definitely you need to love this job to be able to cope with the long hours and the long uh, commitments. So when you're breaking news, I know we talk about this off camera all the time is 
how do you make sure it's authentic and real? Because in a world that has the hashtag fake news, how do you combat this? Absolutely. I think this is the most responsible uh, job description a journalist takes very, very seriously. Um, again, I'm sure you've been watching what goes on on social media. Social media has become a platform on its own right. So it is here to stay and it's yeah. going probably hopefully to develop to become a little bit more reliable in terms of news. But at the moment we have us as the tra traditional news media institutions and then we have the social media uh, again gasping the attention of many many young followers across the globe we're talking about millions and millions millions of people interacting actively daily every single minute there um, let's talk about uh, how we do fact checking when it comes to breaking yeah. news for example me i'm someone knows known in the business news to be able to break uh, 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 news all the time uh, so if I manage to get something from a certain credible source, I don't go straight and put it on the screen. There's a big team behind me that needs to double check that and we have to discuss it among us. There's an editor, there's a, a management also. I need to find a second source that confirms the first source of information. And then if the news are so sensitive and they're going to change things if we put them on air, we need to have some recordings. Those recordings has to stay, uh, of course, off record, but it, um, it, it, it protects the rights for the news channel that took actually the risk and put the breaking news yeah. from a certain journalist. Just in case if something goes wrong legally, for example, if, if that person of that source who's concerned decided to sue, we have the, the, the whole uh, information and documents that can support us. Whereas if you try to do that on social media, I'm seeing you've seen it, no one is going to double check. Yeah. It's you, you open up your social platform and you, if you have their 10 million followers, you actually made, you did influence that, person, that news, be it correct or not, be it information or misinformation, there is power there. So now what the, 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 the traditional news media are trying to do, they're trying to find a platform there to connect the two so we can keep becoming the source of information, whether for social media uh, prescribers or subscribers or, 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 or a viewer or traditional audience. Yeah, I think there's, there's, I don't want to say a problem, but right now people are just grabbing their news from non-reliable sources, mm. whether it's rumors or not. And it's really important to have a trusted source and a trusted voice Absolutely. to give that give that news, especially when it comes to, I mean, we talked about business, but business, politics, health, Yep. medical you need to have a reliable source i think eventually uh, there would need to be a bit of regulation especially yeah. in sensitive topics be it politics business news because it moves markets or medical issues i yeah. mean i don't find it uh, uh i actually get very uncomfortable seeing um, a certain influencer or a certain social platform discussing a very important major surgery as if it's a one day walk in and walk out yeah. where it is not the case any major surgery the, the, you know it needs a lot of you know tests and of you course. need to go into anesthesia and consultation and, and maybe yeah. you're going to recover like i would recover it needs me a month where yeah. somebody else would need them two months so it's a very sensitive subject and we have so many vulnerable people there that are sick or uh, they they look up to that person and they would run for that doctor or that clinic or that hospital and they might lose their lives so yeah. It's, I find it something that needs definitely regulation and a little bit of control because it is, at the end of the day, it's people's lives that we're talking about. No, hopefully, I think it's such an evolving topic. Yeah. Um, and you're right, there has to be some sort of regulation in, in life-threatening anything, I think in politics, medical Absolutely. for sure, is, is can change people's lives in a second. Now let's talk about this book. <laughs> It's a bestseller on Amazon, so congratulations. Thank you. Don't look down. Now, it's 
hard-won lessons to help you in your own fight. Absolutely. So you talk about your journey as a journalist, and what about as a woman in this career of journalism? It's all there. It's all there. I mean, the first reason that made me sit down and write this book is uh, it came from me being on the ground all the time and seeing that the female aspect of journalists is smaller and I always wanted it to be bigger. I wanted them to be more present, especially here in the region. I mean, this can go global. It's, it will talk about female journalists in general. Um, and then I was like, no, I wanted to see more talents uh, on the ground. I wanted to see more female journalists willing to uh, roll up their sleeves and do the work and, uh, and get the news going because it's a very important uh, thing we're doing. It has a lot of ethical aspect to it we are there to say the truth and it's one of the most noble things if it's done correctly and it can be also jeopardized to be one of the worst things you could do if you use that job or that platform to say the untruth or to say the, yeah. the, the lies so yeah it came from there and um, i decided to uh, look at it as an easy read so the i told myself if i don't connect with the youth and telling them what happened to me, uh, whether it's failures or successes, and really concentrate on the challenges so they can connect because I don't want them to think that I'm here and I'm all about success. No, yeah. I didn't get there by, and by chance. And everyone has a story. Exactly. I think people connect more when you tell them and you open your heart and the words are coming from your heart to them. And I looked at it as a gift I wanted to pay forward because there's something that happened to me uh, when I was in the UK. Uh, Rosemary, you know, uh, being a student there was not an easy thing. Fees were expensive. Mm -hmm. I was young and stuff like that. And I met this family that helped me quite a lot uh, with accommodation and things like that when I left my aunt's house. And, I, and they did it for no return. They did it with no asking me for anything back. And it taught me that I wanted to do the same. And I actually grew up to become the same and do the same. I like to help without expecting a return. Mm -hmm. And this book is just to express the need of having people doing things without expecting anything. So uh, my colleague yesterday, for example, he said, you put things from your private life and uh, we were surprised we didn't know that all these things happened to you and i said yes i did it in purpose i wanted to open up and talk about everything that uh, happened to me and made me so vulnerable at certain times in my life because that's the way i wanted to say thank you i wanted to say thank you to that experience i wanted to say thank you to the opportunities that were open ahead of me and i wanted to take all that and give it to the next person which is this young girl or that young boy and them doing exactly the same thing i believe in continuity of passing on wisdom yeah i believe in it and i believe it would create this thing that we need uh, hiding things or trying to play it that it's yeah, I did it, but I don't want to share how I did it. I, it stops things from I think evolving. You have to be, yeah, of course. And I think you have to be have a very, I think you have to have a very authentic voice. Mm -hmm. And what I learned from this book is the element of gratitude as well. Absolutely. And the gratitude for lessons, whether yeah. they're failures, the highs and lows, because 100%. that gets you where you are today. Can you share two highlights from the book? Two, two highlights. Le yeah. I would say, uh, when you fail you should not feel embarrassed i think you should feel lucky because uh, someone out there wants you to become better and uh, it's amazing how those very low moments in our lives uh, makes us more wise makes us more experienced and just makes us stronger and i think it's one of the things that i have to touched me all throughout my career up to today. So definitely never, never f uh, fear failure. Maybe you are one of the lucky ones. Maybe there's something very big waiting for you ahead that needed that certain experience and period of your time in your life to, uh, to, uh, to get you to become the best version of yourself. So that's one thing uh, that is very close to my heart. Uh, a second thing that's always, and I think it will stay with me until the last day I have in, in, in life, is 
always pay the gift forward. Love that. Always help people. Always be open to mentor young people. Always uh, share what you've, you've witnessed, what you've learned. Um, don't stop the passing of wisdom and experience and keep it to yourself. Um, a, as if you didn't do anything. B, your impact will be much bigger and you will be remembered for a long time. Mm -hmm. And you are creating or helping at least to create a stronger generation. Because I think it's very needed now with all these platforms and confusion. And you know, you have very vulnerable young people. They don't know where to go, oh. how to get inspired. Do I need to get inspired from her or from him? Or the... So when you have someone who's, uh, who did it, like who did it, who failed, who succeeded, who fell, picked up the pace again and there is and they are they have uh, they, they're doing their job or career or something it's actually you can connect with them and keep that uh, passing on and helping people going I love that I mean those are actually great examples because I have a clip from Oprah which she spoke at the graduate school of Stanford to the graduating class and she talks about failure and it's actually this great clip and I always share it with students and just friends in general and she talks about the path of failure and that just because something fails it's almost like God telling you that you have to actually turn left or right yeah. because it's going to lead you to something greater and better absolutely 100%. but you have to learn your lesson and I think that's the and trick you have to go through the pain you have to learning. go through the pain and yeah. the lesson and once you understand the lesson what that failure brought yeah it will take you to that next path. Absolutely. So I love that. And your second point, which I thought was great, was giving back, paying it forward. Yeah. There is nothing that people in your position that have excelled in your career. I mean, you are Thank incredible you. at what you do. Thank and I am so me. proud to watch you Still on TV. Still have a long way ahead of me. <laughs> Still but learning. I think young students really need to have mentors. Mm -hmm. They need to do work experience. They need to see Absolutely. what it's like to go behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And you know, when when I do interviews where I talk about the fashion industry or media, people don't realize that even just to do this interview behind the scenes, there's about 10 there's people. A big yeah, there's a big team, behind, team yes. whether it's lighting and production, um, you know, editing, direction. There's so many people behind it to get your story across. Totally get it. <laughs> so you can actually find something in the world of media or fashion or whatever it mm -hmm. may be. Um, and find your skill set. But yeah, mentorship is so important. Very, very important. I think it's it's one of the most important things today. Yeah, so if people can give back their time um, to, to the youth, that would be actually the best gift. Absolutely. But again, from the youth side, uh, there's one thing I have to say. Uh, don't wait for things to come and knock your door. You need uh, to go out there. Yes. Um, even if it takes um, an unpaid internship in a big, important organization, go for no. it. Uh, shadow people, uh, take initiatives, ask questions. Uh, if I want to talk about journalism, for example, we're very busy in the office. Yeah. So for me to sit and take time, it's going to be between two uh, programs yeah, or course. it's going to be uh, just after the editorial meeting. Um, so. It's, it has to come that two energies need to meet. So that young person needs to show that this is for him or for her the, the dream job. And if that's the case, you will find them running after you, yeah. uh, trying to ask you, why did you say that? Why did you sit like this? Why, uh, how is the news? How, what do you do in the morning? All these questions that comes from intern are very, very important because you're just saying to that person uh, who's senior, I am, I want to be you. And if you show that, there is no doubt that a person that you wanted information from or learning from would not give you time. Yeah. It, it has to come from, from both sides. It has to be drive, ambition. Definitely. And yes. you need to put the time in. Absolutely. You need to work hard yeah. and show that you are interested. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's so good. So what can we expect in the next around the corner for you? What's next for you? Um, at the moment, I mean, I've just launched a book, so I'm concentrating on spreading the content uh, as much as I can because we're, we're right at the beginning. Um, I'm continuing my daily job, breaking the news, uh, presenting. Uh, of course, I took a, a small break. Uh, health was calling for a priority so now it's time for me to retake and uh, just uh, 
take a day as a day at a time seeing where it is i don't want to make any plans i'm someone if once you see the book um i'm not someone who plans and put targets because i just believe that this puts pressure on some on people yeah. yes you do need to have the right energy and the right thing saying okay i'm in this job and i want to be successful i want to do the best i can um without setting in my opinion and again each one is different without setting yourself targets i want to be this by this age or want to be this no take it easy on yourself the pressure out there is huge enough for you to be able to be sit standing and trying to do something that's by itself a big yeah so let life do its magic and its work you have the energy you are putting the hard work you don't know what opportunities will open up for me i'm still working with the same mentality I worked with when I decided to take the risk and come to Dubai mm -hmm. and take this job. I put the work. If a mission is given to me, I will give it my optimum. I will give it all my time. I will do my best. And then magic happens. And that magic happens. It's so good. It's very, very nice when something just pop up uh, because you were, you're just doing the, the, the things are taking you to your right path. And I'm, from that school so no planning for me doing things as i do them all the time but I, you know and we, waiting for the next door to open i love that because you seize the opportunity you are so present when you are on screen and off screen <laughs> and you seize the opportunity you have pure intentions which Absolutely. i think is so important yes and i think yeah. you're responsible when it comes to sharing facts and i think that is really what i wanted to get across because it is so important when you're in a position of journalism or even if you are on social media with such a big following you have a voice and that yeah. voice should always be used for the good for the good yes for always the good, for the truth yeah for whatever you're pre presenting or talking about and be authentic there's you know this idea of shortcuts or getting more followers it doesn't pay in the end no. right like i think we reached a stage in that if, if you want to talk in general social media yeah. or something else where people are so thirsty for uh, authentic yeah. things authentic information authentic people uh, diversity is beautiful we don't have to be somebody else it's just going to make you hide and not shine and god is so great that each one of us has something special about him that this is how great the universe is and if you hide that gift that has been given to you yeah. it's such a shame and a waste because you have something beautiful about you and because you're authentic it shines and thinks you know rosemin is remembered because she's rosemin whereas if i decided to become or just copy somebody else i lost myself a eh? yeah so i'm gone i'm finished yeah. i don't know where i am and then i would never be her or him i would never be able because the the whole chemistry is different i have something they don't have and she has something i don't have and why don't we have that richness of diversity and just be ourselves. This is going to serve a lot uh, in general. Mm -hmm. So yes, authentic is definitely something I speak I speak about as well, and I take it seriously. Fatma, before you go, Indigo Living, their motto is living beautifully. What does it mean to you? Living beautifully means uh, many things to me, but um, at the top of the list is a being authentic. Uh, to uh, try to get away from anything that would pressurize you, anything that you don't have control over, uh, let it sort itself out. Try to sort out things that you can have control on them today that elevate pressure and puts you in the right place where you have to be so you can concentrate on the most important things to you. Living beautifully also means to me uh, having a clean living at home because I spend long hours at work. Uh, cameras, mics, uh, galleries, sounds and engineer, 10 voices in my head. So when I go home, I need to have a, a clean place. space. <laughs> Absolutely. A clean space, yeah. uh, a beautiful Declutter. bedroom where I can yeah. just declutter. I don't yeah. have TV in my bedroom. Uh, oh, just, there you go. just a Fun place. Fun fact where about Fatma. <laughs> making it warm and also a small, little, uh, you know, modest spa that I can actually use because I don't have the luxury of, you know, doing those trips to the spa all the time. So, yes, that's what it means if we talk about uh, living uh, in terms of physical living. 
I love that. You know, one of the gifts I gave myself for my 40th was I redid my home and I just needed a fresh palette. I needed things decluttered. I yes. needed th things clean. And it was actually the best gift I gave Absolutely. myself because when your home is your sanctuary, yes. you are calm, you sleep well. And it, again, you're just nurturing the best version of yourself. So I love Very that answer. Awesome. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Fatma's book is out on Amazon. It's a best-selling book. So make sure you head over on Amazon and get it one click. It is the best gift you can give yourself and your friends. Get inspired by her story and her lessons. And you have so many incredible endorsements, including the chairman of <laughs> Al Arabiya. So thank you so much one of for my being mentors. here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rosemary, for and having me. And thank you for watching. Make sure you follow Indigo Living. Make sure you get her book and uh, check us out on YouTube. Watch the full episode as well as our upcoming guests as well. See you very soon.